Moonfall was directed by Roland Emmerich, the master of disaster. And it stars Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry, and John Bradley in a story about the moon falling out of orbit, getting closer and closer to a collision course with Earth, thusly affecting the oceans and gravity and a lot of other things. But before I get into the rest of the review, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor for this video, Factor. Get fresh, ready-made meals delivered to your doorstep when you sign up with Factor. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. It's also very convenient. There's no prep and no mess. Factor cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping, so meals come together in minutes, taking the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Factor even offers meals for those looking to follow keto, low-calorie, or vegan and vegetarian lifestyle. Factor also helps you avoid fast food and ordering in with no-nonsense delicious food that's ready quickly. And Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes or less. Over the past eight months since becoming a father of twin boys, the amount of free time I have in the day has dwindled significantly. So when it comes to meals, it's really easy to just start ordering everything over and over again, and that can get rather expensive. So it's great to have something like Factor delivered to my house, and I know it's going to be there, I know it's going to be quick, and I know it's going to be healthy. And that has helped us save a lot of time while we're also juggling the kids. So use my link in the description box below or go to go.factor75.com and use the code POGCHRIS120 for $120 off. So check out the link in the description below and thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. You probably didn't expect me to talk about this movie because pretty much unanimously it has more negative reviews than positive. It's got this score on IMDb right Right now and it's got this score on Rotten Tomatoes right now and a lot of people are talking about how bad Moonfall is. So why am I talking about it? I must have liked it, right? Well, not in the way that you, I don't know, not in the way that a film critic should like a movie, but I had a really good time at the movies watching Moonfall with my buddy and a big tub of popcorn because I went into Moonfall having seen Godzilla 98, and Stargate, and Independence Day, and The Day After Tomorrow, and The Patriot, and 2012, and a bunch of other Roland Emmerich movies. I know the types of movies he generally makes, and I went into the theater expecting something like that, and I successfully turned my brain off, and I really enjoyed myself. Moonfall is not a movie for scientists. There is a scene where a bunch of people on a roof are hopping like Super Mario Brothers to a helicopter. I, I probably was annoying in the theater. I laughed so hard. So I suppose that I enjoyed Moonfall on the same level that I enjoyed a movie like Lara Croft Tomb Raider starring Angelina Jolie. Or when I randomly actually feel like watching the 98 Godzilla, despite the fact that that movie is not a good movie. But I'd be lying if I said I was never entertained by anything in Godzilla 98. When I saw that movie, I was like 10. Of course I liked Godzilla 98. It's not a good movie and incredibly stupid and Godzilla looks dumb, but that movie has a subplot with Jean Reno as a French Secret Service agent who's just trying to get a good cup of coffee in America. <laughs> How can you not like that? I'm kidding. Um, Godzilla 98 is not a good movie, but it is on Netflix right now. And I did actually put it on the other day. And I won't lie, I was entertained by it. But I know it's not good. There are certain movies you can just watch knowing this is not a quote unquote good movie, but what the fuck even is a good movie? It's purely subjective. Yeah, I guess academically, Moonfall's a bad movie. They're not going to teach Moonfall in screenplay courses, but it is a very entertaining movie if you know that you are just going to watch a film where Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry, and John Bradley blast off to the moon to try to correct its orbit before everybody on planet Earth gets sucked up into the fucking sky. I don't think anybody went to Independence Day or Godzilla or 2012 or Day After Tomorrow expecting real science. 
Nobody does. You want to see buildings crumble and get sucked into the earth. Movies like this exist for a very specific reason. If I feel very depressed or my anxiety is really bad on any given day, a movie like Moonfall is exactly what I would want to have on. I don't want to watch Gravity because Gravity is fucking terrifying. It's great and it's a far better movie than Moonfall. But if I genuinely want like a comfort movie, I would watch a film like Moonfall. They exist for a reason. Like, I'm not saying you have to like this movie. That's that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I've seen critics reviews for Jackass Forever, which I loved, that have said Jackass Forever sets out to do exactly what it wants to do. And it does it very well. And you know what you're getting going into Jackass and you get that and it's entertaining. Did anybody go into Moonfall expecting a fucking lecture on science? No, of course not. So why the shift? Why can't we enjoy a big, dumb, sci-fi spectacle film like this while dissecting all the things that are stupid about it? Roger Ebert said something about this, and I'm paraphrasing. He basically said, like, you know, does a movie do what it's set out to do? And if it did, and if its audience seems pleased by what the audience is promised, then is it actually a bad movie? You know, it's hard to, to quantify that really. But in the case of movies like Moonfall, I guess I would like to occasionally have really big, dumb, stupid movies like this because I don't want every film I see to activate my brain and I have a serious conversation with my wife or my friend on the way home about life and we all feel very emotional and we feel like we learned a lesson. Like, I don't always need that in every movie, especially right now, man. A lot of people are very stressed and depression levels are high. I think if you know me, you know that I'm not telling you that Moonfall is this amazing thing. I'm just telling you that I was incredibly entertained throughout the entire runtime. Now, much of that was laughing at knowingly very bad dialogue. Early on, there's some horrendous exposition with a young boy who says, that's why we lost the house. This kid's like eight, you know, and he just says that. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazingly bad, but so funny. And I loved it. There's a scene where a tree has fallen on someone and the moon's getting kind of close to the earth. So gravity's all fucked up and they realize they can lift the tree up. And the girl's like, the moon is helping us. I died. I died, guys. I fucking died inside. It was so perfect. I guess I just knew exactly what the film was just from the poster and the credits. And I got exactly what I wanted. I'm not telling you to rush out and see Moonfall because I recognize that if you're not on this movie's wavelength, if this isn't the type of film you want to see, you'll probably really not enjoy it. As far as like actual problems with the movie, like... And I'm not talking about the fact that the science makes no sense. I like the movie The Core, okay? That movie is the dumbest motherfucking movie in existence. But it is really entertaining. If you're the type of person who occasionally will watch a movie like The Core, just because you want to see Aaron Eckhart and Hilary Swank try to restart the core of the Earth, you might like Moonfall. <laughs> But there are structural issues that didn't really make sense to me and some very messy transitions as well. Some awkward dialogue shifts. I thought Patrick Wilson's character was a little too angry. Like he has justification for being angry because for years he's been saying there's some sort of life form coming out of the moon and we need to pay attention to this and he lost his job at NASA. But even once people are like respecting him again, once obviously he's proven right, he still seems kind of pissed, and I, I didn't love the character choices there that could have been directing or an actor choice, I don't know. John Bradley probably has the best arc in the movie, but like a lot of Roland Emmerich movies, some of the comedy just doesn't work and it falls very flat. But you go to Moonfall to see destruction. If you see a movie about the moon hurtling to Earth and it's directed by Roland Emmerich, you know exactly what you're expecting. And if you get that and still didn't like it, that's fine. I just don't like how nasty people are being. I think it's completely unnecessary. I think it is just as stupid as going to a movie called Jackass Forever, knowing you're going to see Johnny Knoxville and a bunch of other people get hit in the nutsack a lot, and then going online and complaining about seeing a bunch of people getting hit in the nutsack. So that's my rant on disaster movies in the year 2022 and whether or not they have a future. And I hope they do, because every few years I do like seeing the Chrysler building destroyed in some way. 
That's the goddamn Chrysler building we're talking about here. I don't know what it is about movies like this, but they hold a special place in my heart. And if you enjoy a big, dumb movie like this too, let me know below. Anyway, guys, uh, I love you. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.